House of S House of Siage, <laughs> House of Gaga, House of uh, House Labs, Hub Do Da D Beauty. So everything that no soft sculpting still so, all right, Kaki. It's. Sometimes I wish I could just roll the tape back and be like, what did I just say? <laughs> and there are no clouds today, guys. <laughs> Color correcting. My last video was such a nightmare and I don't even think it turned out that well. <laughs> but when there's not a cloud in the sky, hopefully what I see here is what you will see in the video. So, hi guys, we're gonna be doing a good old fashioned trying new makeup get ready with me today. And when I'm trying new makeup, it is almost never a first impression. So these are things that I have gotten a chance to get my head around. This was one I impulse bought. I saw it come out, it was like showed me on Instagram and Completely blanked on the fact that like Kierweiss loves to put fragrances and things now, but nonetheless I bought the Kierweiss the beautiful tint can confirm it still has that gross smell to it But I will be using this today. I will I will just get over it and I also Picked up some new stuff from makeup by Mario. Why did I say it like that? I guess group X any anybody they look so good like the same person. I say, you want ice cream cone? Both of them say yes, how in the hell? They're twins, that's why. The things that are stuck in my brain from adolescence. I, um, I like that, I do, but like, I feel like my whole body, I feel like I have been beaten about the body and face with a two by four right now. I carried my child across an airport. We were going to miss our connection because our first plane was late and the elevator had like a line of people in wheelchairs. And so we had to carry him up the escalator and there wasn't time to put him back in the stroller. And so I had him on my hip and I'm running through the airport. My child weighs over 30 pounds now. And like my whole body is paying for that. That was Tuesday, it is Friday, and I still feel like I have been battered about the face and body. So anyway, that's this Mario, Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. And I will go ahead and like do a full face application of this and then put the Cure Weiss on. We'll kind of go backwards just because I can confirm this is a very functional cream bronzer to just be used as a good old fashioned cream bronzer. I want to try and use it the other way, the way that he is kind of advertising it online being like, this is a foundation complexion product that just makes you look tan kind of thing. And it does come in multiple shades. So that's definitely one up on that Shantikai that we just tried. I also picked up one of, and I already had another of his Master Crystal Reflectors. This one happens to be in bronzite. I think that the youths made this one go viral, you know, in ancient TikTok history, which is like a few months ago, uh, on the tick of talks. And so I finally got my phalanges on this. I'm gonna be using that. Also, this is not new, but it's new to me. Steph from Beauty Unhyped, we met up for wine when she was in town and I gave her my House of Siage Batman lipstick because she had an absolute fit over it when I talked about it on Instagram and I have like more House of Siage lipstick than I know what to do with. And she said, I, you know, think that you would really like this Viseart Spritz edit. And I've had a chance to try it twice, but I haven't gotten a chance to do anything with the actual like Aperol colors, you know, like the kind of corals and stuff. So maybe that's what we'll do today. And I also have new stuff from House of Siage. There are some lipsticks and stuff that they sent in their new matte formula with some lip liners. So maybe we'll do something like that. I don't know what this makeup look is going to look like today, but it's going to be fun regardless. The sky is clear, the birds be chirping, it's gonna be a good day. And also, um, I went on my Instagram and I asked you guys to ask me anything. So that will give us something to chat about as we proceed. So let's proceed forth. Okie dokie. Also, this is the second of my Contha robes that I ordered from that shop on Etsy. I always forget to link it, but it's on my Instagram and it's saved in a highlight. And they emailed me and they were like, I ordered a pink one. 
and the owner emailed me and was like, hey, we're out of the pink one. What do you think about this one? And I was like, I think it's beautiful. So this is the one that just arrived and I love it so much. I love, love the colors. All right, all right. We'll put the headband back on just to keep my hair out of my face. Hello. <laughs> My back hurts. All right, so I took a risk here and I got this in the shade F1 and it seems to be a pretty good match. But like I said, we are going to start with this and I guess I'm going to apply it with still like a cream blush, cream bronzer brush. This is the Travel 101 from BK and we'll just see what we get, right? Ooh. So this is not only kind of like the Shantikai that I just did, where I did put it all over my face before I went in with my foundation, but also this is sort of how everything is right now. Everybody's like putting out these tan complexion products. Let me know in the comments if you're someone who for one reason or another, be it depth of skin tone or undertone or lightness of skin tone, that these kinds of products, regardless of the shade, are just not functional for you. Cause they're kind of new to me. You know, I think that this approach, it's not something that has never been done before, but it's not something that's been so ubiquitous before to just apply bronzer all over the whole face as kind of a skin enhancer. And so I wanna know if there are people out there who just glaze past these kinds of things because tanning yourself in some way in the way that like makeup brands are hoping that you're going to like find that resonates with you doesn't resonate with you you know like maybe you just don't want to be tan but also like maybe on certain skin tones these things just don't work so that's just you know a pretty light application, blending it into my neck, not necessarily taking it all the way down my neck. And I think that that's really pretty. You can see where I um, tweeze my little dumb widow's peak that doesn't really exist. Like I just have five hairs, and by five I mean about 25 hairs, right here that I should honestly just get lasered off because they grow in a different texture. They just kind of are a little bit kinky and really, really annoying and they get greasy because they just are like not part of the rest of my hair. And so I just tweeze them out, but you can, you can see they don't take sun very well. Like that spot doesn't take sun very well. And so you can always see like the difference between my natural skin tone and a bronzer, unless I really, really take drastic measures. So that's a good little, visual, right? A comparison. Now we're going to go in with the Kierweiss, the beautiful tint. And normally I would just do this with my fingers, but since I'm only going to be applying it to select areas, I am just going to go with my Rare Beauty foundation brush. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with kind of the direction that Kierweiss has been going lately, I don't really know what their direction is as far as like, hey, this is a plastic package. That doesn't seem like something Kierweiss would do. I will look online at the end. We will kind of deep dive on the handful of products that I'm trying for the first time on camera today, but I don't know. And I, I will always be a broken record about this. I don't know why they chose this particular scent. It's, it's so unappealing. <laughs> it's so unappealing. It smells kind of dirty, you know? Like it smells kind of old and like rotten. It's not right. It's like rotten flowers. It's just not good. I'm so sorry. To my knowledge, their cheek products don't have it, but their lipsticks do, their lip glosses do, both of their new foundation products do. It doesn't really linger, but it really does not enhance the experience. So that seemed kind of virtually indetectable. Indetectable? Undetectable. Mm, living in some brain fog today. But, I mean, maybe that's kind of the point, right? When I put it on earlier, it had, like, you know, the past few days, it had a similar coverage level to, like, the Shantikai Future Skin Gel. You know, just a pretty standard skin tint. 
and while I think it wore well on its own, I did combine it with, yeah, I want to say the Item Beauty Concealer, even though that is probably what I'm going to use today. And it didn't really, I feel like it kind of wanted to break up a little bit, but whatevs. I'll take a look at the ingredients and see if it's like silicone free or something because that's a really easy way to get your concealer or your foundation to break up is by combining something that's silicone free with something that has a lot of silicones in it. They just kind of disagree with each other or something oil based and water based, you know, it's just science. And it's not always the case, I'm not a chemist, but like I have noticed that sometimes when you try and like put something that's a very, very clean beauty with something that isn't, it's just my own personal theory. So I am applying more of the Makeup by Mario right now, just to show you guys that, you know, if what you're looking for is something that fits into your routine as a bronzer, it still does that. And it's quite sheer. It's a very, very pretty color. And I will swatch this when we like talk about, you know, the claims and everything. I'll swatch it against his cream stick bronzer in light as well as his powder bronzer in light because I have both of those. But so far, like that's one of my favorite subtle glow bronzers. Like it looks incredibly natural on me. Like this color is very, very dialed in, much like his stick bronzer that I like so much. It's not orange. It has a really beautiful kind of like tawny thing to it, kind of like a blonde color, you know, and like a dirty blonde to it. And also it doesn't have any kind of fragrance to it. That's something I didn't notice until I had already used the NARS cream bronzer. I, you know, they put out a bunch of shades of that, including like two shades of Laguna, which is really, really awesome, but it smells like coconut. <laughs> Why? NARS? NARS is just not typically, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're not really known for just like sticking fragrance in things, right? But that bronzer, that cream bronzer, man, it's not a deal breaker, but it is a little disappointing that it has smelled like kind of that. So while we go in with things that are not new, being blush, contour, things of that nature, let's go ahead and Take a look at the questions. What do you ask for at the nail salon? Are your nails natural or extensions? So that's what my nails look like. They are literally due for a fill any moment. And I have my natural nails under here. This is what's known as builder gel or solar gel or um, UV gel. And we learned about it only briefly in cosmetology school and I frankly had forgotten even what it was, but the advantage of it is that you don't have to grind it all the way off or soak it off in order to do a fill. It is this little container of pink kind of syrupy material that they have to heat and then they apply it in blobs and they spread it out and then you put it in to cure and under the light and then they do actually grind it and like shape it the same way they would oh dip nails powder dip nails or an acrylic tip once they've actually like you know uh sealed it with the acrylic and everything i've never done acrylic tips it doesn't appeal to me i i don't know why i i, I don't know why i don't i have no idea why <laughs> I think that it's because my nails do grow pretty well in this situation. So like I've never really seen the purpose of it. So, um, you know, no shade at all, but they're not tips. It's my actual nails underneath there. You can see that they look, they have a lot of paint under them, but this allows them to grow really, really long. I used to get dip powder like every single time, but a dip powder has to be soaked off and my nails get so, 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 so thin. It's just, it's awful. It's super painful um, to like soak it off every single time and redo it. And so that was why my nail tech suggested this, but also I have to choose a blush. Why don't I do my eyes first before we do a blush, but I am going to put on a little bit of powder. My nail tech suggested this. And then also it's gel polish on top, which is why I can do cool stuff like have every nail a different color. If you're doing dip, you could do that, but it would be a pain. Like it would be a pain in the butt because you'd be opening a bunch of containers all the time and it would probably like mix together or like fly around and like, I don't know, they'd probably like 
you know, sully their own containers and stuff. So that is what I get done. And some places really want to charge way too much for it. They charge, I think five dollars more than they would for like an acrylic set. I'm not sure. I think the whole thing is $45 and then obviously I tip. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. And my nail tech is, she's phenomenal. She likes having fun with me. So the reason that I wanna go in on my eyes first is because I think we're gonna go in that coral direction and the coral direction is going to then probably need to be met by my blush and I need to know what it's gonna look like first. So here is, and this isn't retired, but I could only find it on a few websites. Beautylish tends to keep these kinds of things in stock longer than Sephora does. I'm not sure if Sephora is phasing Viseart out or something, but it is available on Beautylish right now. So let's see. If I do wanna do something kind of in that coral family, let's just start with this really pretty, like bright, bright coral. This one, it's a little bit shimmery. Oh, it's in my lashes. A little bit of fallout, maybe I should have primed. What do you do when you can't seem to enjoy anything anymore? So I highly recommend reading this book that I am rereading right now, if you are in a place where you just feel like you can't get out of your own way. And that means, it could mean anything. It could mean depression. It could mean kind of just being stuck in a loop, stuck in a cycle, just feeling like you're in a rut. It really is about understanding why we do the things that we do in terms of like self-sabotage and um, how our brains work. It's called The Untethered Soul. And it's actually very, I mean, yeah, sure. It is a woo-woo self-help book. I am a big fan of a woo-woo self-help book. Can we talk about that color? It's great. In my mind, it is, you know, semi-scientific. It's talking about like, you know, psychology and the energy in your body and stuff like that. But more than anything, it's like when you guys hear me say things like, I don't want to let my anger at someone in traffic come home with me. You know what I mean? If I get angry at someone in traffic, they don't even know I'm angry. I'm just ruining my own day. It's all kind of coming from that book. I read it years and years ago and I'm rereading it now. And I read just like a few pages of it every morning. And it's so helpful and it's so non-judgmental. And I feel like every person who reads it would get something a little bit different out of it, like a different part of it would resonate with you. And it's written so simply that you have to be disciplined enough to like take it really slow. Because if you, you can, you could just, if you listened to it, I feel like you wouldn't catch it. You know what I mean? The words are too simple. It'd be easy to just kind of zone out. And so you have to kind of concentrate on it and let things sink in. And that's why, it's, I, you know, I kind of savor it when I do read it. I think that when you can't enjoy things anymore, it's a sign that you need to go within. Like you need to ask yourself what, in me is like commanding my attention right now, you know? Because a lot of times it has to do with things in your life that you've kind of like ignored and that you know deep down need to change, but you have been reluctant to ask yourself the difficult questions or like, maybe admit something to yourself, admit what you're afraid of, you know? Like, oh, is, is something in my life, if I change that, does that mean I'm admitting that I'm a failure or something like that? And um, also, you know, there are psychiatrists and psychologists and clinicians who are very, very qualified. If you have the means to be able to, you know, seek some counseling because, I mean, not being able to enjoy things anymore is, a pretty textbook symptom of depression. And there are things that can be done about depression. And I mean, I personally, I'm not a doctor, but ever since I had my baby, ever since postpartum, I've been on an antidepressant because it just helps me get out of bed in the morning. It helps me regulate a little bit better, so. And I also think that like the world is a very depressing place right now. I think that the world might have always been a little bit depressing, but the internet, the presence and the ever presence, the omnipresence of the internet makes us so aware of every sad thing all the time. 
And we feel guilty if we don't pay attention to it, even though the human mind is really not supposed to be able to process that much information in that way all the time, that I feel like it's like depression is going to become and has become a larger issue because we are as a society just surrounded by everyone's problems all the time, not just our own. And I don't think that that's really fair. Like I don't have a super good answer for it, but I don't, I, I don't think it's fair. So I hope that that helps. Would you consider doing a Patreon again, but keep it simple and only post vlog videos there? No. <laughs> No, I already have my days packed. I already feel guilty enough for sitting still, giving myself another platform to maintain. That would take a toll on my health because I do think that you have to be respectful of your own personal boundaries. It's really not even about criticism or anything in that sense because I know that anybody who joined my Patreon would be there just for the vlogs, but like, I'm kind of giving all that I can. I like to work. And so it's not a matter of, you know, not feeling comfortable posting vlogs. It's about the fact that like my life is full, that's all. <laughs> but thank you, that's a nice thing to ask. Oh man, would love to hear your take on the beauty YouTube is dying craze. I don't know where the craze is. I'm, I'm not really, I kind of hear about this here and there, but actually Steph and I talked about this. And here's the thing, society might as well put in parentheses after every headline, according to teenagers and young 20s. Like they really only care what youths think. And those are the opinions that are really counted as relevant. That's why, you know, models are young and models are aspirational. And uh, you know, when they report on fashion trends, it's usually the stuff being worn by people who are young and have not begun to age yet or have the money to look like they'll never age kind of thing. But it's the reason that we do tend to shoot people like Emma Chamberlain to meteoric success is because we as a society love a wonderkind, right? It makes us feel relevant when we can relate to young people. But I personally, absolutely love being on beauty YouTube because part of me really enjoys being forgotten by that part of the conversation. And I think that the people who continue to return to my channel do too. Like I'm not on TikTok and it's not like I don't, I mean, I have a TikTok because I've posted like a couple of videos there at one point or another. But other than that, uh, it's a place that I feel like if I were to try and tap into that viewership, I would be molding myself to people who weren't really there to find people like me in the first place. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like beauty YouTube might be dying by the numbers, but the people who remain are just as relevant as the people who are watching who remain because we're here for the same reason. And it is because we're not looking for some kind of flash in the pan viral sensation. We're not looking for something to steal and then abuse our attention. I really feel like TikTok abuses your attention in a lot of ways. So does Instagram. And there's just something very normal. It feels very normal, very analog to me about getting on YouTube, talking to people, and having them talk back. And the older that I get, the more I want to be able to like translate life force and everything that I do and not optimize it. And I feel like YouTube becoming less optimized in that sense where people just wanna come and hang out with people because we feel like we're part of a community. Sure, that's gonna look like it's dying by the numbers, but I don't feel threatened by that. I feel like the ones who are left are going to be here for all the same reasons, you know? doesn't bother me at all. I'm very grateful for my situation. I'm not trying to be an Instagram star. If I were, I would just make reels all the time. That's all that they want you to do is make reels. 
And <laughs> just from my own experience, from an advertising platform standpoint, I have eyeshadow everywhere. Everywhere, this has a lot of fallout. Google is a lot more reliable, a lot more predictable, a lot more respectful of its creators, or at least it tries to be, and a lot more transparent than Facebook or <laughs> the metaverse. Okay. And to me, it's just always going to be a place that I want to be because there's always somebody there. Like it's not the wild west. I really feel like Facebook will always be the wild west. They will always be shoot first, ask questions later. They will always be like Facebook metaverse, whatever, is always going to be a place with less accountability to creators. And also to like, if you watch Naomi John order things that are being advertised on TikTok, they're all scams, every last one of them. They are either not what was promised, they are very, very low quality, or they just take her money and then disappear. And that's kind of been a pattern that I noticed across TikTok. It is an absolutely zero accountability platform from the standpoint of creators and advertisers and anything like that. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to, at least for now, stick with stick with Google, <laughs> stick with long form content. I also don't wanna watch long form content on Instagram. When people post long form content, like a full get ready with me or something on their stories, that's not where I'm at when I'm on Instagram. I wanna just kind of see people's stories. I don't want to watch a long form video there. And so I just feel like they're two different things. And I, I belong here in the long form format. All right, so as I've done this now, Take it all in, be pretty, but I do want to use some of my bronzite here. So, swatched. This is very, very pretty. Stop trying to focus on my ear. My ear is not a person. It has this very soft feel to it, but not at all wet. In fact, you can kind of see the texture of it. When you touch it, it still kind of kicks up a little bit and it does have like a pretty cool shift to it. It goes a little bit yellow gold. Where? Like outer? Eh, maybe just all over the pink. As just kind of a topper and blend. That's a little confused looking, but that's okay. I think that I was, when I saw this go viral, you know, I was expecting it to be something that just completely stole the show, like a Danessa Myrick's shadow or something. But it's really subtle. It's very pretty. I like it a lot. But it is so shimmery. It is kind of the wrong kind of shimmer to have right in the crease. So I just kind of want to make sure it doesn't get too far in there. And then I am going to take a little bit of like a muddy cool tone of some persuasion like this guy right here that doesn't really look like it would be dark, but what it's gonna do is just kind of change the temperature right there and change the texture a touch. My camera died. <laughs> I think that we are really getting the spritz of it all here. Let's do some blush. Let's make some decisions on blush here. Actually, the Makeup by Mario Creamy Peach would be perfect for this, wouldn't it? But I do wanna go for something that's gonna bridge that a little bit because this is not a super naturally occurring shade in my skin, this coral color. And so I kind of have to do a little bit of work to make sure that like we, we fill the difference, right? So this is a really good way to do that. So this is the Wayne Goss The Weightless Veil Blush Palette in Sweet Wildflower. And I'm just gonna use Dusty Rose. So as you can see, Dusty Rose is gonna be closer to my skin tone. And then that's going to bridge the gap to this. Does that make sense? So that it's less contrast. And you might not even notice that this is really there as much as it just makes my skin look more like it would have that color in it. Actually, what I noticed about that Shantikai bronzer yesterday was that like comparing it to that Byredo eyeshadow and stuff, that's a very, very common color, right? Is that this is so much pinker than I give it credit for, right? It's like actually kind of like Amber Rush from L'Oreal Infallible or Lisa Aldridge Angelica, is it Angelica? I think it's Angelica that's like that, you know? And it's a very, very like, you know, flattering shade for my skin, but it's also extremely common. I 
I wanted to make sure to share that because, well, you probably don't need to spend $82 on it, especially if you're thinking mainly of using it on your eyeballs. This is such a beautifully sheer blush. He's a big appreciator of sheer blush, but then he also, Wayne Goss, like makes shades that are meant for deeper skin. And so they will be really saturated, but they still have a really beautiful like sheer quality when they're on those skin tones. And he's like a big admirer of the Patrick Ta original, like the monochrome moment blushes. They're very, very sheer. And then the, I think he liked the Pat McGrath ones too. Those are some of the most beautifully sheer. Oh my God, you guys, have you seen the pictures of the new ones? I wonder if they're out yet. If they are, you might have to like watch me order this online right now. But for the moment, let's go ahead and do this. Again, this is a creamy peach. I bought this mainly because he put a color out that was so similar to this in his collab with KKW and the color was so pretty. I was so enamored with it, but the formula was awful. And so I really appreciate that like he stuck to his guns and made this color and it's just as dialed in as that other one, but the formula is just such an improvement. I'm actually gonna use this slightly. I'm gonna go back in with that bigger brush, get a little more diffused color there. There we go. Okay, <laughs> I think that I'm gonna use a little bit of this, like I said, this Chantecai Bliss Cheek Shade. It is not what I expected in terms of being a useful blush, but it is almost like a pink brightening powder, and it's a really, really good way to blend that contrast that I get between my blush and my under eyes, kind of like the, you know, viral sensation that is putting your blush in your under eye concealer, but everybody knows I am the queen of being a viral sensation, right? So I'm gonna do liner, mascara, brows, and then we're gonna come back and we're going to play with some House of Siage lipstick and lip liners. <laughs> We are going to add more blush eventually, but I want to decide on a lip color first. Earlier in my House of Siage relationship, they sent me this special edition Disney by Siage lipstick case. If you're unfamiliar with House of Siage, they do beautiful perfumes and then they do, sorry, I just almost dropped this. Um, they do these really cool lipstick cases. This is for the luxury lipstick person, okay? The lipsticks themselves are not that expensive and the formulas are amazing, but you cannot use them without a lipstick case and the lipstick cases, I think, start at $200. I didn't buy these, they sent these to me, but the colors are amazing uh, and the formulas are just unbelievably beautiful. So this is called the Bombshell, this color. This was one I picked for myself. It's 
so beautiful, but definitely too violet to be wearing today. A little bit too much blue in there, but that's such a good winter color for me. Or honestly, anytime I'm wearing something that's just not this peach. They sent the Batman special edition. And like I said, I gave that to my friend Steph because she really, really liked the look of that deep red that it was. And it looked great on me, but I was like, it's just not something that I'm gonna reach for that often because it's kind of a high maintenance color to wear and I'm kind of low maintenance on my lips. And so they just sent their new ones. So I got all of the shades here. Actually, I gave some of them to Steph. These are the ones that I kept that are so, cause I wanted her to be able to like trade different shades out in her lipstick case. These are the shades that I kept. And then I also have one in this lipstick case. So this is just a silver one, super, super pretty. It's got the Swarovski crystals inlaid in it and it's really, really heavy. And this is the shade Velvet Nude. It says it on the side of the tube, they just snap in. And that's that actually, I shouldn't have wiped the other one off, should I? Oh my gosh, you guys, we finished the first part of like what's out from season four of Stranger Things. Last night, man, it's so good. It's so good, not disappointing. So good, so good, so good, so good. Like, I wanted to kind of follow up because I was talking about how much I liked it, but I'd only seen two episodes. Love it. All right, so this is actually a valuable comparison because you can see that that original shade, that bombshell shade is glossy and it's like a cream. And then their new nude, sorry, their new, the nude shade here on me is the new kind of like satin matte formula. It has just a little bit less sheen, but it's still extremely comfortable. The other shades that I kept here, one, this is what the cartridges look like, the actual lipsticks before you put them in the case. Bye. Another, it's, this is the matte, but it's another kind of beautiful rosy color that it's kind of halfway in between those two, right? It really looks like you just combined those two and then you know, this is how they come, like all protected. Then I kept Femme. These silver ones are all matte formula. Femme is a very similar to, not, is it Pixie? Or the other one from Victoria Beckham Beauty. That beautiful kind of like super shiny purple. It's like a, a cool toned light colored like lilac color. And then I kept this one, which is definitely a little outside my comfort zone. And this is called Exotic Orchid, but oh my Lord in heaven, it's so pretty. <laughs> I mean, I think we have enough exotic orchid going on right now. Like if I did that, it would overwhelm every single thing on my face. And I basically just did a look like that using Punch Pop from Clinique that was amazing. So um, I am going to spare myself that anxiety of putting that color on right now. And we are gonna go with this nude shade right here that I already have in a lipstick case. They smell like vanilla. I really feel like the Beauty Pie lipsticks are the most similar to this in formula and in this lovely sensuous shape that they come in. And the lip liner I think that goes best with this is this one called Overline. Looks like that. I will compare that with my khaki lip liner here. The khaki lip liner is a little bit cooler. So it's more of a lip contour whereas overline is going to be just like a little bit more of like a skin tone, you know, for me. Like it's more, it's more peachy. So here we go. I don't think these have a smell. They're like medium soft. They're not as soft as the Thrive one. I'm going to look very made up in comparison to the fact that I'm wearing a robe. <laughs> So when you roll that up, looks like that. Really, really nice thing to hold. So creamy. Mm, even though it's the matte formula, it's super, super creamy. And this guy, you can look for like the little thing that snaps in. Yeah. So. Not that these need to be blended to each other because they're literally the exact same color. I just want it to be a little more sheer. They do sheer out really beautifully. It makes me feel like I need a little bit more tan in my eyeshadow. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Just to kind of pull the whole concept together. 
I'm using this shade right here, which is very, very similar to those. It's my little trick for pulling together a look that is a lot, is taking the other shades, like your blush or something like that, and pulling just a little tiny bit of it into your eye look, but, or other places on your face, but it's already that apricot, aperol kind of color, and that's already what's on my cheeks. In fact, I think what this cheek look needs is something that is very, not luxury, very drugstore, and that is Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. So that's what we're going to do real quick. We're having a mild case of pink face, which makes me think mm, maybe just a little bit of powder and a little bit of bronzer here. Again, the reason that that even would tend to happen with this look is because I always run that risk when we're talking about colors that don't naturally exist in my skin tone. So, ma, very, very little transfer. It probably will continue to even dry down more than that. They are quite long wearing, but I just wanted to not have my lips completely overwhelm my face here. And a little trick for me is to just kind of like blend out my Cupid's bow because my Cupid's bow is very, very like pointy. And so accentuating it, it is kind of the first thing that you see. Blur, 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 guys. Bringing a little bit of brown right there into my outer corner, not just the top because I kind of want to like blur my eyeliner a little. See, that makes a big difference. Yep, like that. Yeah, and I think that it just needs a little touch of bronzer and it's an opportune time to go ahead and pull out the Make It By Mario other bronzers, isn't it? So here I have light in the Soft Sculpt Bronzer and the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. And I'm gonna swatch those real quick and then I'm going to apply the powder to my face. Okay, so you can definitely see the similarities in the colors, but the differences in the formulas. So this is the cream, the soft sculpt shaping stick. This is that powder bronzer. And then this is the cream. It's so translucent and it's super slippy in a good way. It does still grip when it gets on the skin, but it's nowhere near as like cream to powder as that stick is. And the stick is a little bit, appears to be a little bit yellower, but I mean, we're splitting hairs. They're very, very similar in color. They might be intended to be the same in color. IDK. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and just pull some skin tone back in here try and make me look a little bit less painted, you know? All right, so guys, this is the makeup vibe today. What do you think? It's definitely a lot, but I dig it. Like it's a little outside my comfort zone, but it's a lot of fun. And this lipstick is incredibly comfortable. So let's just do a little miniature deep dive on each of the things that is new in this video. Starting with our Makeup by Mario friends. Makeup by Mario. I would just like to say overall, I've been incredibly impressed with this entire brand. Okay, the website plays music. Hey everyone, Mario here, founder of that's fun. Soft sculpting is the new contouring. He is a man who likes to advertise his techniques and make things go viral. And you know what? I respect it. What's going on with my eyebrow right there? Don't do that. Yes, I accept all your cookies. Comes in six shades, a three-in-one tinted complexion balm that warms and nourishes with sheer coverage to even out skin tone. He really is talking about this as a complexion product, almost like a foundation, but it's like a skin enhancer. I also think that it works perfectly well as a really, really beautiful sheer cream bronzer. And that's sort of the categorization I would give it, but you guys did get a chance to see it all over my face with no foundation on in the beginning. So I hope that was helpful. It says how to work the fuller side of the F1 brush, which I don't have into the skin enhancer until the hairs are evenly coated. Apply starting from the perimeter of the face and blend 
inward, so kind of the J-Lo thing, right, of like keeping everything really bright here, but then it's kind of the same way that you would apply a contour or a bronzer anyway. To get Mario's two-step transformation, apply Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector over the Enhancer. So Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. What's that? What's that? What? There are two things? Well, now I feel like an idiot. What is that? A three-in-one powder to protect, perfect, illuminate, blur, and set. Huh, okay, add to cart. Yeah, um, apparently that's how you, uh, you know, achieve his two-step, but this is still the bronzer. And this is $30 and you get five grams of product. This is 10 grams of product, which is just absolutely, 10.5 grams of product, which is absolutely insane. So the Master Crystal Reflector, I have quartz, I'm not a big fan of it. I haven't figured out how to really like use it the way that I wanna use it yet. It's a little bit too icy for me. $24, you got 3.5 grams of product and it comes in three shades. We have quartz, we have bronzite, and we have citrine. And citrine is gonna be like a very yellow, gold color, very, very pretty. But it is inspired by Mario's love of crystals. These multi-purpose prismatic highlighters reflect beautifully day and night, illuminates eyes and cheeks with a sheer lightweight finish. Looks like a veil of crystal sparkle. So they're really beautifully like translucent. As you can see on my eyeballs right now, it did not steal the show, it's not very opaque. When hit by light, it sparkles and reflects, sorry, the sparkles reflect and glow. Can be used on eyes, cheeks, and decollete anywhere you want to add luminosity. So there's that. Let's talk about Kirwas. It's on their website and it's also on Credo. The tinted moisturizer called The Beautiful Tint comes in 16 shades. That's pretty good for a clean beauty company. I don't wanna like make exceptions or have a double standard, but that's pretty good. And it is $45 from $45. Skin improving and illuminating tint, the perfect complexion enhancing fusion of skincare and makeup deeply hydrates for beautifully beaming luminescent skin. I wanna know why it's from $45. Discover the beautiful tint, a Kirwise revolution, our new tinted moisturizer, the perfect complexion enhancing fusion of skincare and makeup for beautifully beaming skin, color infused skincare. Lightweight, breathable, tinted moisturizer, deeply hydrates, soothes, and boosts your skin nat skin's natural luminosity instantly and over time. Tinted, luminous skin. I feel like we're using the same words a lot. Complexion enhancing, no makeup makeup. Our 16 flattering shades, carefully crafted by Kirsten Kirwise with the perfect touch of tint for beautiful undetectable coverage. Blend seamlessly, even skin tone and creates our signature lit from within fresh glow, just enough coverage to give you the confidence to go bare face. I still don't know what you would add to this to make it from, for the, for the, maybe that's just their default because there doesn't appear to be any kind of luxury option. You know what I mean? Like a, a lid or something like a luxury lid. Like this feels just like regular old drugstore skin tint packaging. It's pretty, but Kirwise is known for being very eco-conscious with their reusable packaging and their like luxury compacts and everything. And most of the time, even if it comes in something like this, it has some kind of like luxury upgrade for the lid or something, and this just doesn't. So I don't know, maybe they're turning over a weirdly new leaf and just kind of, uh, you know, assimilating a little bit. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I really thought that they would say more about it, but that's really it. It is certified organic though, that is neat. All their stuff I think is certified organic. I'm not totally sure, but your girl is allergic to herbicides and pesticides and things of that nature. And so anything organic is good in my book. I really think it matters. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. $45, oh, and you get 1.35 fluid ounces. That's probably the most cost-effective product that I've seen come out from Kirwise. And then House of Siage, I do want to talk about these lipsticks real quick. Mm. Oh, you guys, the Wonder Woman 80th anniversary candle is 50% off, which would make it $30, which is a very good price for that. It is one of the best smells I've ever smelled. I love that perfume. It's like just this amazing combination of like fruit and floral and vanilla. Mm, it's so good and that candle is amazing. I'm going to order another one. I wonder if they put the uh, Wonder Woman perfume on sale. They did not. It is so good. It is so good. But yeah, that, that candle is, I was like dreading burning all the way through it because I was like, I don't want to pay $60 for another one, but now I'm going to pay $30 for another one. Matte Velvet Lipstick Collection. Again, you cannot use these lipsticks without the case, which can be kind of a drawback. 
They are $35 a piece. They have it in both the silver packaging and the gold packaging so that it matches your lipstick case. It's all a vibe. It's all a vibe and it comes in a little pouch inside of a leather bound little guy here. Leather bound? Leather covered uh, little case. So it is the experience. It's all about kind of that luxury experience. It's incredibly unnecessary and uh, like completely unabashedly so. You know what I mean? It's extra. It's meaning to be extra. And can you get these kinds of lipsticks someplace else? I would say that the Beauty Pie ones are pretty similar. The colors, they do a really, really good job with the colors. They're very, they're all incredibly wearable. They're all really nuanced and they're all very like, even if they're a bright color, I really feel like they've dialed in the undertones and made them look good on skin, on someone's skin, you know? They're not, nothing ever feels um, half-baked, you know? So that being the vibe and those being the things, let me just chat final thoughts here on what, what I think. So the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer, I feel like this is a happy medium for people who didn't wanna do the stick because it's too intense, like too intensely pigmented and didn't wanna do the powder just cause they're not really into like powder format delivery system bronzers. And it doesn't have like a dewy finish to it but it is a little bit more creamy looking on the skin, a little bit dewier looking than the, or I guess more nourished looking than that, uh, the, the cream stick. The cream stick is not as satin hybrid finish as like the M Cosmetics. The M Cosmetics So Soft bronzers, or they call them like the multi-play or something like that. They are like, almost not even a cream. They're so dry when you put them on the skin and they blend really beautifully. The Rare Beauty ones are very similar, but this is just slightly like right in between that and like that funky Danessa Myricks weird slippy face balm thing. And that is, I feel like kind of exactly what he was going for. Something that yes, it is approachable enough to anybody who's used to using something as a cream bronzer that it'll work as a cream bronzer, but also a translucence. It's a lot more translucent than either of the other bronzers that he has put out thus far. So yeah, I really, really dig this. I'm gonna keep using it because I really appreciate, it kind of reminds me of the like Salt New York contour in the sense that it is color without being like a ton, ton, ton of opacity. So there's something really lovely about that. And it, yeah, like I said, it doesn't have a fragrance, which I still don't understand why there's a fragrance in the NARS one. That kind of bothers me. The Kiroys. This is beautiful, but A, I feel like they're really departing from their Kierwise thing, which brands are allowed to do, but at the same time, I would have liked to see some effort towards, you know, using recycled packaging or something like that. There are a million different things they could have done. They could have put this in aluminum and it would have been, you know what I mean? Very like cool and like apothecary looking or something. I digress, my big hang up here is the smell. I mean, it is just the worst. I'm, ugh, I'm so confused. It's like, I am honestly like not a big fan of fragrances in really any makeup, but this one in particular really grinds my gears. Like, it's just, I don't understand why this is the smell. <laughs> this is not good. It's just, it smells rotten, but it's a perfectly good, like if someone likes this, I don't blame them. It's a perfectly good skin tint and I'll probably continue using it because it's organic. And so my skin is going to like it, you know? But it's honestly like, it's a $45 skin tint. There are a lot of really beautiful $45 skin tints out there. It has about the same amount of coverage as the Chantecaille, but I have worn it a few times and done like, you know, long day wear tests on it and everything. It is really no, it's not, it's not Chantica. You know what I mean? It's not blowing my mind with any kind of magic. Sorry, I got distracted because I remembered that I was going to tell you guys whether it had silicones in it or not. There are no cones. <laughs> there is no dimethicone or anything like that. I am not totally sure if like octaldodecanol is considered just like not a cyclic silicone or if it is a silicone. I want to say that as far as the way that we think of silicones in makeup, this is silicone free. So it's silicone free and organic and it is really high performing and beautiful. And it is only $45 for the Kierweiss lovers out there. You know, I just don't think it's like super, super special other than the fact that like those ingredients are going to be incredibly kind if, you know, to your skin. But then why did they put the fragrance in there? You know, why is there parfum? 
Why is there parfum? Stop it! Especially if it's got lavender water as the first ingredient, it probably, if you took the parfum out, it would probably smell pleasantly of lavender. I could be wrong. Maybe lavender water doesn't smell like lavender, but I would have liked lavender oil in there that smelled like lavender more than whatever the crap this smell is. It's bad. I will stop now. I'm going to stop. Is it, oh, I didn't even tell you guys how much the lip liners are. They are $39 a piece. Do I think that these lip liners are worth $39? No. No, they kind of feel, you know, they feel like lip liners and there's nothing particularly like super duper luxurious about this packaging. It's very pretty. It gives me Lancome, you know, gives me Lancome vibes and Lancome is probably $39 too. But this is mainly about the color to me. You know, the formula is good. It's not anything particularly innovative. It's good, it works, but it's like if you are looking for a, a lip liner that perfectly matches particular shades in the Siage lipstick, that's what these are good for. Now, the whole thing with the lipsticks is, you know, yes, they're absolutely beautiful colors. They're absolutely beautiful formulas. Whether you see a lipstick that you can only use if you pay $100 for the case that holds it, even if it is only once, we are talking again kind of about like a Kirwise situation, right? It's like you're buying the, the case that it lives in in order for it to function and you only have to buy it once and it just becomes part of the experience. You have to decide if that's worth it to you. You know, <laughs> if this is something that you're going to like really love pulling out of your bag and reapplying your lipstick and being that person, like, you know, that's something that is individual to the individual kind of thing. But I will definitely confirm that the colors are unbelievable. It's like the line of lipsticks where I can wear the most shades. The ones that I gave to Steph, it's not because they would have looked bad on me. It's just because they are not particularly like my my go-tos, like things that have a little bit more of like an apricot to them or that are like pretty dark. And so they would have more contrast on me. She is of Asian descent. She can wear more kind of like vampy lip colors and she does wear them really, really well. And so, you know, someone is going to get use out of them, but it's not because I couldn't wear the colors if I tried. Like they are really, really dialed in gorgeous shades. Every time I open up one of their tubes of, of lipstick, I'm always impressed by the fact that like, it's hard for me to find a favorite. And when I do find the perfect one, it actually is perfect. It's like going in there and looking for a shade match in a foundation that has like 50 shades. You're like, oh, I don't have to settle for one that looks pretty good. Like I can find something that looks like my skin. It's it's that kind of thing where you can, you can really, really like find your perfect shade in a Siage lipstick. And I feel like they've made, they, they had to have, right? For the prices that they are, like I do feel like they've delivered on that end of it if you are passionate about finding your like perfect signature lipstick color, so. I do get it for free in PR and I do have an affiliate partnership with them, but guys, most affiliates pay you between like 10 and 15% depending on like who you're monetizing through. They pay me 3%. That's very, very little. I want to personally say that I, talk about their products because I love them and because it keeps me on their PR list and I love getting their makeup. I love getting their makeup. I love getting their perfumes. I love getting their candles. Like I love their stuff. It feels so special and so beautiful to me. And like, that's why I talk about it. That's like full influencer disclosure. I really make almost no money off of actually like convincing anybody to buy it. And that would never be something that I would do just for the money anyway. I mean, the most I make off of con convincing anybody to buy like one item of makeup is just a couple bucks anyway. But I just think that like full transparency, it's like funny to know that really I just get the most excited about getting their packages in the mail because their, their stuff is fantastic. It's just really, really exciting for me. So yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's that's it today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. This is a really long video as usual. I didn't even answer that many questions, so apologies there, but hopefully the ones I did answer were fun. Maybe I'll go on my Instagram and answer the rest of them. And uh, yeah, guys, if you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.